I'm going to share my methodology of how to find salmon and steelhead in rivers using digital tools on your phone, on your laptop, to do efficient trip planning, which will lead to more success. And being able to make the most of our time on the water by showing up to the river when the fish are there. I'm not talking about just having the right, the right buddies or the right Facebook group, right? Or people who tell you on social media, oh yeah, you gotta come down here. Uh, you know, the fishing is on fire and then you show up and it's like not, and you're like, man, what, what's up with that, you know? No, I'm talking about uh, some real digital tools that allow you to get ahead of the game, predict when the run's gonna show up, and you can be the one making those reports. And some of you are gonna say, oh, this is, this is crap, why are you sharing this? Everyone's gotta pay their dues, I paid my dues, you gotta pay your dues, you gotta sit there on the water and just, you know, not have success and, and that's the way I learned. You gotta learn the same way. Everyone's gotta pay their dues so they appreciate the resource. And look, I appreciate that point of view. However, I'm not sure it's the best way to get new people into, into support and sustain uh, this whole harvest recreation thing we love with salmon, steelhead, trout, whatever it is. But being able to catch and cook and eat your own fish is amazing. The reality is for the future of fishing in the Pacific Northwest and the state of Washington, we need an engaged group of people who are continuing to learn and grow and get involved. And uh, that means the next generation. And uh, they may not be willing to pay their dues. So this video uh, might, might make some people upset, but it's going to show you uh, how to use the right tools to be ahead of the game. Right, knowing when and where to go uh, and, and knowing how to rewater and apply the right technique those three things that's how you get it done that's how you have success that's how you enter into that 10% who catch 90% you blah 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 you've heard the whole thing right but we're gonna focus on the first part of that knowing when and where to go now I'm not gonna give any away any specific rivers I'm not gonna tell you like oh show up to this river at this time and this is you know the run timing tips and all that i'm not giving all that away but i'm going to give you the tools so that you can build your own when to go where to go and uh, i'm going to take something out of the learning curve if you're struggling with that question i get that question a lot on the blog in the in the comment section and uh, i've not seen it addressed anywhere i'm i'm going to give you the answer so let's do some trip planning let's get a, get the smartphone out the computer out and let me show you some stuff all right, first and foremost, uh, the best approach here is you got to start with where you live. I live in the South Sound, in the Puyallup area. I've got rivers within, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. And those are my home rivers. That's where I want to spend most of my effort. Why is that? Well, the, the rivers closest to you, assuming you have a decent, uh, a decent run of fish on those rivers, the rivers closest to you are where you're going to learn the most about how to catch salmon and steelhead, right? And, and you're gonna be able to take those lessons anywhere, but you gotta start with, with, with some place where you can spend time on the water and really learn. So now the techniques I'm gonna show you are gonna be, it's gonna allow you to travel to places far and wide and show up on the right day and be successful. Uh, but it really starts with, man, make it happen in your river near your house first uh, and, and then branch out. One last thing on social media, the really good fishermen, they're not putting their their best opportunities out there for everyone uh, to, 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 to consume and show up on them. They don't want the company, people fishing right next to them because they saw the report on social media. So anything you read there, you've got to look at it a little suspiciously because they're either going to throw you off the trail, the information's worth crap, or uh, <clears throat> the, the opportunity's already gone. So the best opportunity has already passed and now they're sharing it with you and you show up and you're like, hey, this isn't as good. And that's where you hear the, uh, well, you should have been here yesterday. You're either reading reports or you're making them. Now let's go make some reports. All right, now there are a few popular rivers that have Facebook groups associated with them, 
where if you just want to know are the fish in are the fish getting caught you know let, let's take just take the Puyallup River that's near me uh, it's a very popular river a lot of people know about it there's public access up and down it like it, it gets bombed this is a pink season in 2023 right odd year we had a ton of fishermen fishing the Puyallup there's a Puyallup River Facebook Facebook group Join, join the group and look for uh, look for look for the fish pictures, right? It, pe people aren't shy about sharing them, right? Uh, you want to go out to the coast in the fall, and you want to know is it is now a good time to fish or not? You know, some coastal coho, some uh, you know wh wherever you are, like you're not gonna find people who are willing to share that. So uh, you know, you want to go uh, someplace uh, kind of niche and a little, little further away, and you see you see video of just beautiful. Aaron's like, man, I want to go fish there. I don't even know where that is. Um, but you, you follow this guide and you'll, you'll, you'll be able to figure that out uh, on your own. All right, so let's start with one really big obvious one, and that is, uh, that's the WFW escapement reports, right? Th this is, uh, th this most of the hatcheries that are, uh, that are on rivers, uh, they publish a, a weekly report to WFW saying, this is how many fish returned uh, for uh, the <clears throat> at this facility and of this stock of fish, how many adults, how many jacks, etc. right? The date that they were counted is, is different than the date that uh, the report goes out. Uh, the report goes out on Thursdays typically and uh, you, you can absolutely use this report. Now, not every hatchery, like you could have a tribal hatchery on a river and it might not make it into the WFW escapement reports. <clears throat> this is a great place to start. Uh, it's arranged by species, right? So you look, you're looking through fall Chinook on top and spring Chinook, and then you get down into coho and, and you kind of figure this out. Th this, this is, now some of the places might be unfamiliar to you. You might see a name on there and be like, man, where is that? Just Google it, Google it, look it up. You'll see, oh, okay, that facility is on this river and then you get an idea, okay, this, these are the fish that are showing up. Now, the problem with these reports, the challenge with these reports is that uh, they tell you how many fish have arrived to date, not how many arrived since the last report. So just because there's a big number, oh, there's 2,000 coho in that river. Uh, yeah, but look at the report date. What, what, what did the last report say? If the last report said 2,000. Well, then this many showed up in the last week, and that's important because who cares how many fish have showed up on the year you want to show up when they're they're going through the river on their way to the hatchery right you can't fish for them in the hatchery right right no fish in that hatchery pond um that's tempting though sometimes right you see those big big suckers swimming around there A shameless plug for pnwbestlife.com because uh on there i have developed some really cool tools that allow you to see uh, a chart a visual you know graphic of the delta of fish arriving. So you just, you go to, go to whichever river uh, you're looking for that's, that's on this report. Chances are I have a page associated with it on pnwbestlife.com, just like this one here that I'm showing you. And uh, you see a graph of the deltas. So you can watch it like you're, like you're watching a stock price or something, right? It goes up, it spikes. Okay, that's meaningful. That, that's the surge of fish that's starting to show up. Now, keep in mind, <clears throat> it's a week behind, however, you you notice like when it start when it's the fish start trickling in right you get a spike and then you get the really big spike that comes after it so um it's important to know what the water flow is doing in these instances because water flow will absolutely affect how many fish come in uh, but there's many runs where where that's not the case you know if you're fishing a late summer early fall run uh or, an er or sometimes even mid fall you don't have as many big high water surges and it's more consistent. And you can kind of uh, use these graphs and the historical graphs, right? Which I include, I give you a run timing graph. So you can see historically on here, when did the fish normally come in? <clears throat> now, typically you're gonna have a two to three week window of when is the peak of that run, but you get the idea. You can kind of narrow it down and really watch in that two to three week window. Usually uh, you can catch your first fish on that river before the run has peaked. But if you want your absolute best chance, you want to fish it uh, when it's peaking. But this is also why it's great to fish a river close to home, right? Because uh, you can be on there uh, as the run starts and you can kind of figure it out. Like, all right, when 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 are the fish really here? 
Um, and, and then you can kind of take that knowledge and the, that pattern and you can take it anywhere with these run timing graphs, escapement reports and go, okay, now I know I can apply this to other rivers and I can figure it out how to show up to some strange river, first time fishing it and have success. All right, another thing that is really important when it comes to this is, is we talked about water flow, right? Okay, well, well there's, there's a great place on the USGS sites where you can look at historical current water flow of many of our rivers. And so you can use this to say, okay, this is the window I wanna fish this, but is tomorrow a good day to fish? Or maybe I have a weekend open, or I took a day, I took Monday off. Is Monday a good day to fish? Uh, and that's a question you can answer with these water flow graphs. And there's a lot to learn of uh, looking at these things Having a having an idea of like I think this is going to be a good I think the river is going to do this and then you go out there. Some rivers, uh, you know, the flow will tell you if you know how to read it. The flow will tell you that hey, it's going to be it's going to be really bad visibility. It's going to be all brown chocolate milk and you're gonna you're gonna struggle to hook fish in that case. Uh, other times, uh, even if the water clarity is good, there's some rivers that they just don't fish good at that height. And what I mean is, is there's uh, the whole, rather than having definition to the river where you have riffle, run, drift, pool, tail out, uh, you have just one long, fast run, right? And if you're just going out there to floss fish and you want to fish that, you know, it, you can show up all kinds of different times. But if you're trying to, you're trying to fish spinners, you're trying to fish bobber and egg, you're trying to get biting fish, like it, you want holding water. Well, when some, some rivers don't have much holding water at certain levels. And you, you find that out when you go there and you're like, okay, I went there at 2000 CFS and it wasn't very fishable. My fa the good looking spot, the hole was gone because there's too much water. So uh, that's another thing you can you can learn by looking at these, these water graphs. Another, another really good uh, tool, digital tool, that's just available for everyone is, uh, is the WFW uh, or ODFW, looking at look at the regulations that are published, right? You think, okay, these are the rivers near me. Uh, let's let's look at these regulations. If the regulations include the species of fish that you want to angle for, uh, particularly if they they talk about retention of of hatchery fish, or 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 in some cases you have healthy runs of, of wild fish, wild coho, pinks. Uh, chum perhaps, and, and the, like it, it will say that in the regulations and you can go, uh, now now you should be you should be familiar with regulations before you go fish anyways. And uh, I've done, uh, I've done a, um, I made an effort on pwbestlife.com, the same, the same river pages where I show you the escapement graphs, the run timings, also to include the permanent regulations and a link to the emergency regula regulations because you have to keep an eye on those before you go fishing. But those, if you look at those, you get an idea what's available to fish because the regulations will address that, right? If there's, if there's, you're wondering, does that river have steelhead in it? Right, hatchery steel. I, I want to catch a hatchery steelhead. Well, guess what? The regulations will usually indicate retention rules for hatchery steelhead, and you can you can figure that out. Then you can go look at the escapement reports and go, the steelhead section. Where 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 are they at? Where are these fish at? Let me figure it out. Right. And then you go look at the the water graphs for this thing. And you watch the water graphs and you watch the weather and you go, okay, uh, what what's going on with this river system after after a big rain in the in the area uh, of the watershed of where of where this river is um, originates from? And and you can start to piece together the puzzle that says uh, this is a good time to go fishing. Uh, tomorrow is a good day to go fishing. And uh, and, and I, I I can expect to have a chance of success. Oh, you know, one, 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 more thing. one of the best, one of the best sources of information on run timing is your own logbook. If you don't, if you don't have a lot of time to fish, even if you do, but if you don't have a lot of time to fish and you're making these trips out to these rivers and you're getting, you're struggling, you're, it's, you know, you're, you're not hooking fish and you're wondering, are they really there or not? If you're not keeping your own personal log of the conditions of the time, the, the river flow, all of these different factors, um, you are missing a huge opportunity because uh, when, when you have a fishing trip that ends without success, uh, I used to always tell my wife, well, I discovered another way to not catch fish today, right? That's what I used to say. Um, 
but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna record that sucker, and I'm the the conditions that led to not being successful. I'm not gonna do those things again. Um, I'm gonna rule that out. Eventually, you rule them all out. You're only left with fishing trips that have success, uh, and, and it's much more predictable. But if you don't know the the if you don't remember the next year, the the thing that led to not having success, then you're gonna repeat the same mistake and you're not gonna learn and it's gonna take years and you're gonna pay your dues, so to speak, or you're gonna give up altogether. Plenty of people do that. Maybe you're really concerned about, you want you love eating fish, you love eating salmon and you want a lot of good food quality salmon for your table. Then you're also gonna to need to pay attention to uh, that run timing dynamic is really important. And you're also gonna pay attention to where on the river you're, you're fishing. You know, last year they opened the Yakima River, never fished it before. I went down uh, to, a, <clears throat> to a place that looked like it was a, it was a good bank spot. And um, you know, I knew, I knew the fish were in. I, I, I do, you know, I, I use these tools myself and I, and I walked down there and I caught uh, a king salmon uh, within a few casts and a coho a little bit later. Uh, there were other people on the bank. Um, not that I'm always comparing myself to other people, but you know, I did, I did pretty well for, for never having fished it, right? Fishing around a bunch of people who were regular, so to speak. But I just showed up and I had success right away. Um, but I didn't keep that king salmon, right? The Yakima's a long way from where that thing came in on the river in the Columbia and king salmon tend to degrade quickly right the chinook they're they're um they're not they're not always going to cut well particularly if they're not large size so if i wanted to catch a, a chinook and eat it i want to be lower on the river um to get the the, the higher table fare quality the code tends to 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 um you can catch them further up river and they will cut better longer uh and, and i kept the coho uh, I, the coho was probably B grade meat for me, and I and I smoked it. Made great smoking food. It was it was it wasn't white or it wasn't mushy or anything like that. But it was just you know it wasn't fresh coho. It's not the same. So so you know it, it, where you fish really matters for that table uh, fare, and and you'll keep those notes too, right? As you learn a river system, you'll figure out which fish and what part of the run. The the early part of the run, some of those fish might cut better. The late part of the run not so much right and, and it changes where you have to think about fishing if you want table fare quality fish and, and and you're not trying to bring boots back or turn into crab meat or or, or, or smoker meat